next, we are going to move now into the realm of romantic ballerina and point work. Because what happened is that suddenly this ballerina called Marie Taglioni decided that to make herself look really light and ethereal and like, like a spirit floating in the air, she went right up on her tiptoes, but without point shoes. Really hard to do without the support there. But they had really strong feet because they did all that quick footwork, which gave them the strength in the instep to really push themselves off the floor. And Gemma's come back dressed in the costume that made Marie Taglioni so famous. And actually, what made her really famous was she appeared in an opera dressed with a veil over her head. And she just floated across the stage in the gaslight on her toes, like this. And it was magic, absolute magic. And you can come down now, that's lovely. <laughs> Thank you. It caused an absolute sensation because people didn't know how on earth she did it. She didn't have blocked shoes with a bit hard bit in it. She only darned her shoes and she had a little bit of wadding inside. So the point work that was done at that time was very minimal like that. Or she might just take a little arabesque and come straight out of it again. Just take a pose and come straight out of it. Yes, just to give that appearance of flight. And really... The French, that French soft style um, was there with those softer shoes. But what happened was, as the Italian training gained momentum, we had all these really strong um, Italian ballerinas that could do lots and lots of tricks. They were strong. And the Italian shoe, it's because the Italian shoemaker developed this fantastic shoe which had a block in it in the front which hardened the shoe to such an extent, like Gemma's already got now, that enables them to stand up on their toes. But initially, they didn't do any pirouettes or anything like that on their toes, and they would just do dainty little exercises, like, would you like to just show your ballonet exercise coming forwards, where they just occasionally go up. You just do that little échappé at the end, yes? Italian ballerinas went to Russia, all the Russian ballerinas complained because they didn't like to work in those hardened shoes. Fumi's now going to show us the sort of exercises that were developing because we now had the harder shoe. So let's have a look at this little pizzicato, please. Okay. You can see she's now taking positions, actually able to stand on her toe. Now, the next exercise that Fumi is going to show you is an Italian teacher called a Mr. Cicchetti. I want you to look very carefully at this exercise because you will notice that the steps within it are very similar to some of the ballets that you see today. Gemma, could you just come back with your romantic length tutu? As you can see, what happened is it got shorter and shorter and shorter until eventually 
it's so short and it's built like a pyramid inside, so it sticks out completely. And it's the, the tutu that we know and love so much. And it obviously is the perfect garment to show off all that legwork underneath. Yes, so Fumi's just gone to put on a practice tutu so that we can see what the finished product will look like, all right? And she's going to show you now the Queen of Dryad solo from Don Quixote. Mm -hmm. 